So, how's it going? Have you almost finished it? Have you done any of it? I've done some. And by some you mean you've almost finished it, right? No, by some I mean I started it, hated it and deleted it. All? All. And how many times have you done that? I don't know, about four. Look, in my defence, it helps. I delete it, then something better comes from the ideas I first had. It usually works. But not this time. No, not this time. How long have you been staring at that screen? You know, I'm not entirely sure. Well, I'm guessing it's been a while. Maybe if you got up and moved around, maybe if you ate something. No, I can't. I need to get this done. Okay, but maybe if you ate something, you'd be able to think better. No, deadline. Yeah, Miriam, Miriam said she was wanting it by the end of the week, didn't she? Yeah, I've not exactly forgotten that. Plus, how could I forget with her messaging me every two minutes asking for updates? Did you tell her you were blocked? What? No, of course I didn't. If she knew I was struggling, she'd cut me off and not publish. I sent her a bunch of thumbs up emojis, and then I put my phone in the fridge. The fridge? Yes, the fridge. It was either the fridge or the oven, so my phone could be thanking yeah, me I didn't fry it. Lucy, I need you to listen to me, okay? You're putting way too much pressure on yourself. You need to relax. Seriously, why can't I write a single word? You did, but then you deleted it all. Thank you for reminding me of that. But you know what? It's a good thing that it was all deleted because it was rubbish. Okay, well, I think you're wrong there, especially how you tend to exaggerate how much your work sucks when it doesn't. Nope. This time it's pretty accurate. It just, none of it made sense. None of it. The language was sloppy, the tenses were all mixed up, it just, it wasn't right. Let me guess, it wasn't perfect. Yes, it wasn't perfect. And it has to be. Okay, I said it once and I'll say it again. Nothing's perfect. Okay, it can be great, it can be fantastic, whatever, but nothing is going to live up to the incredibly high standards you've set up for yourself. My standards are high because they have to be. I have to keep doing better at everything. I have to keep making everything perfect. You can't, you, you won't. Perfect doesn't exist. Your work's amazing, can't that be enough? No, it can't. I wish it could, but it can't. And do you know what else? I would love it if you'd stop telling me my work's amazing. For once, I wish someone would just be honest with me and tell me what's actually wrong with my stuff instead of filling my head with all of these lies. I mean, who does that help? We are being honest with you. None of us mean to fill your head with lies. We wouldn't want that for you. We all think your work's amazing, but none of us are writers here. You're the writer, and that just means you'll know more about this stuff than any of us. What, so you're saying you don't read now? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> of course I read. But I haven't written anything since I was made to in high school. All I know about your work is that I love it. So many people do too. Your stories bring a lot of happiness to people. I wish you could let that be enough for you, and quite frankly, I don't know why it isn't. You're an imperfect person, Lucy, so am I. We both make imperfect stuff. That is okay. Maybe for you. For me, it's not. I have, I have so much to lose. I have so much to prove. Like, all my life, people have told me I won't amount to anything. They've underestimated me. They've called me a failure. This is my chance to prove them wrong. If my writing is a failure, that's how they'll see me, as a failure. But if my writing is a success, they'll see I have succeeded. Don't you get that? I have to succeed, I have to prove them wrong. I just, I just have to. Those people aren't your life anymore. Why do you let them rule what you do? Because they're the voices I hear in my head. They're the faces that come to me in my dreams. They're the comments that keep me awake at night. They're the driving force behind it all, really. Okay, but you've got so many people in your life that love you now that know you're going to succeed. Why can't you believe us? Just leave all those other voices behind. Oh, who knows? I don't know. Maybe I'm cursed or something. Well, you're definitely not cursed.
Look, what happened to you in high school was awful, and I'm sorry it did happen to you. No one deserves to have their dreams crushed. But you got out of there, you came to uni, your love of writing came back, your dreams came back, and you were able to get your first book published. So? So? If it hadn't been for us lifting you up, then you wouldn't have gotten your book published. So? So? Look at where you are now. You're writing your second book. Miriam's messaging you wanting to know how it's going. And the obvious best bit. I'm still in your life. <laughs> Look, those people before, they didn't know what they were talking about. Let's be honest. They were jealous of you. Do you know, that's exactly what my mum used to say to me too. <laughs> and she was right. And I bet she's as proud of you now as she was back then. If not prouder. Yeah, I hope so. You just need to have a bit more faith in yourself, okay? We all have faith in you. So if you can't find any faith for yourself, well, you can borrow mine. But I would like it back. Okay. I guess there's no harm in trying. No. Do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> Okay, how about we don't do that again? How about you try writing something? 